Hello there and welcome to another Friday night for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. I am Rafael Di Furia and this week I wanted to talk a bit about the exact opposite of last week's episode. Last week was not meant to be any kind of deterrent for moving to Italy, but just some of the realities that are very important to consider because these are some of the things that can make a big difference in a person's life. But this week, I wanted to go over what some of the wonderful things are actually about Italy. Last time I did nine things, nine reasons why not to move to Italy, but this week I wanted to do nine reasons to move to Italy. But just before we get too much deeper into this episode, a huge, huge thank you to those of you who helped to make episodes like this possible through rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash rafaeldifuria or for the one-time donations through rafaeldifuria.com slash support. And also a huge thank you as well to those of you who like these episodes on YouTube and share them with your friends. Let's get into the episode and roll that intro. All right, so you know what? Let's just start with the easy one. Let's just get it out of the way. Let's not even think about this twice. The first reason I'm going to say why you should move to Italy is just simply for the reason that it is Italy. Enough said. <laughs> Shirts available. <laughs> no, but really, jokes aside, Italy, there is so much to it more than just what you see at the surface level. The wonderful, beautiful things, which I am going to talk about, or at least some of them. But it has a substance to it which you really can't find in a lot of the world. Yes, are there things that, are, that you can find here that you can find in every other country? Yeah, absolutely. This is the modern world. There's a lot of similarities between a lot of different countries. And it's just you have to choose which flavor of modernity are you interested in. Are you interested in a more Western take, a more Eastern take, more whatever it may be. And then once you find that part of the world that's of interest to you, then you can start getting it down and nailing it down to specific locations. And Italy is no different. Life in the north is quite different than life in the deep south or Sicily. In the center of the country, it also has its own flavor. And then specifically where you go in the north or in the center or in the south, everything's going to change again. And that also partially takes me into my next point about the cultural experience uh, that is so hard to compare. Like if you're especially the history buff, architectural art or opera buff, these are things that Italy does and has done for a long time very well, all since the, the ancient times all the way. I'm not going to say that Maneskin or Moneskin is the best representation of what Italy is or what it should be, but I mean, hey, they're taking the world by storm. I mean, even for example, where I live, the small little city where I live, Rovigo, when I walk through certain streets in the center, it's not uncommon that I'll hear opera just coming from the conservatories or piano music, instrumental music, just walking in the streets. It's like I'm walking and then all of a sudden, opera. I'm in Italy. So, of course, clearly this is what's supposed to be happening. <laughs> I mean, even uh, during the, the lockdowns last year when people were doing music from their balconies, there was a guy in my neighborhood, I think, that was doing, he was like blaring opera. Or I mean, he wasn't blaring opera, but he was like actually singing it loudly, very loudly. But wherever you go in the country, you will be practically tripping over littered history all over the place. Everything from the Roman times all the way through modern era, uh, little bits and pieces of very important moments through Italian history can be seen in architecture, in art, and other different things that have tangibility that you can see and experience right in front of you. I mean, even like just going through Rome, for example, you got Roman ruins everywhere. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason. It was the capital of the old empire. I mean, they left a lot behind. Or even up where I lived in uh, Merano, in the north of the country, where you have a completely different feel to the country, there was a bridge there in the city that it was built and rebuilt and fell down, but it was called the Roman Bridge, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, or at least that's what people called it. I don't know if that was the official name, but it was because it was there since Roman times. And a lot of the towns and villages that you may visit around the country may actually have had people living there since that time, if not 
before. The next one is another really easy and simple just given. Food. Italian food. Everywhere you go. Can't escape it. And not that that's a bad thing either. But in Italy, what? let me say it like this rather. In America and a lot of the world, what we think of as Italian food is only one small little shard of what Italian food truly encompasses. Everywhere you go, the food is different. Even if I go 20 kilometers south from here or 40 kilometers north, the food and flavor changes. Some places like, say, you get a little bit closer to Venice, you have a lot more fish as part of the kind of traditional diet. But then you get closer to where I am and you see more pork or even some beef, not a ton, but you see some, or even rabbit and horse starts becoming a little bit more popular here. So depending on where you are, the local ingredients that have been traditionally available are going to completely change the, the local experience. I mean, even there is something that is called the butter olive oil line, which is a real thing. It's not necessarily super defined, but they are two very separate mentalities towards cooking. One place above the line, you use butter as the fat when you are cooking. The other part below that line is the olive oil eaters or the olive oil <laughs> users. And even I've spoken to people who grew up above the butter line, the butter olive oil line, and even the way that they look at people who live below the line, they're like, oh, those people, the olive oil eaters. It's just, there's all these different mentalities. And we're talking about people even from the north to another part of the north. If you're a little bit further south, people think differently. I mean, even like where I live, people, some people, call it the south of the north because it is kind of about as far south as you can get while you are still in northern italy okay bologna you could call that northern but that's a different discussion for a different day so let me get into my next point and that is about the cost of living in italy overall cost of living in italy can be much less than what you would find in other parts of the world Yes, are there cheap places in the United States, for example, where you could buy maybe a wonderful home or at least a decent home with a plot of land for thirty to $50,000? Yeah, there are places that you can do that. You can also do that here in Italy. But maybe here in Italy, you'll, you might have a little bit better of a chance to find a place that's a little bit closer to a more populated area, more, not necessarily, I wouldn't call it a desirable area, but maybe an area where you have more people, like even the town where I live. You can find apartments that start in this range. You won't find a whole home necessarily, but if you want to find a whole home, then you have to go really far out and maybe places that wouldn't be the most uh, desirable, but still not a bad place to even think of as calling home. And in regards to most of the basic things that you'll need, food and so on, these things can be be, relatively speaking, quite inexpensive, especially when we're talking about bread here or pasta. Don't get me started on the pasta aisles. <laughs> you see those at every supermarket. I've posted pictures of that on my Instagram, so be sure to check that out if you haven't, because like, I mean, even I haven't taken pictures and posted of some of the, the biggest pasta aisles that I've seen. Like I remember being in Milan and there was three massive aisles, only pasta, only pasta. And they had pasta dotted throughout the store as well. I mean, like uh, pizza, pasta, and amore. We'll just send it with that. But the next point that I wanted to talk about that I specifically like about small town living in Italy. And really when I think about living in Italy, I think about it more from the small town perspective because while in some ways I would say that it's very difficult to say there is something that you could call the real Italy, like what is the real Italy? There's so many different versions of what that is. There's no one single version of the real Italy because all of these different versions of Italy that are all real make up the greater real Italy. But in small towns, you get a flavor of the best of Italians, in my opinion. Yeah, okay, big cities, you can get this as well. But you really see it in smaller cities that are not so large, uh, or in a neighborhood. You can see this in a neighborhood, in, in some of the larger cities where it's more residential. But shopkeepers, 
They might get to the point very quickly where they'll know your name. They'll very quickly start recognizing you and making personalized recommendations based on what you've been buying, what they think you might like, or even some of the most fresh items that they have available to them. Once you start taking all of these things into account, like it's really hard to not choose a life in a small town, in my opinion, because it's, I mean, okay, granted, there are times that I would like to walk out of my house and not be recognized and just be able to blend in with the rest of the crowd behind me. But when you live in a town where there's not really a crowd, then anybody kind of stands out. Everybody says, hi, hi, how are you doing? How are you doing? How's it going? Even I walk by like a line of stores in my town and they'll say, hey, ciao, Rafael. Or I walk by a certain place, ciao, Rafael. Like what I've mentioned before about my love for pizza. And I have a local guy here who started making me uh, stuffed crust pizza upon request because it's something that you don't find here. But for him, it was like, hey, that's a cool idea. I want to try making it. I like having fun making different things than than I normally would and making something a little non-traditional. So for him, it was a fun thing to do. Yeah, maybe you'll find pizzaioli that will have no interest in changing the sacred base of the pizza, but you will find people who are maybe a little bit slower paced in life. And that's a nice thing about life in Italy as well. That's It's a little bit of a different point, but we could call this a bonus point that when you live in some of these smaller places that have or at least allow for a slower pace of life, you can start really getting in touch with the people more and making connections more. I mean, even where I live, again, along this line of kind of that I live in a smaller city and uh, you get to know the store owners. Recently on my Instagram, I posted a, uh, a quick story, a video on my Instagram stories that there was a new place, a new bottega that opened up in town with cold cuts and alcohol and all different sorts of things, like a nicer place. And some of the best bread that I have ever had in the city where I live, really good stuff, some sourdoughs and baguettes and really, really fantastic bread. A little pricey, but very, very good. And they saw that, that Instagram story. And the next time that I went in, they gave me a little gift and they just threw it in my bag when I was checking out as a little thanks. And so you find those little things that even, like I was saying, you get those personalized recommendations. And that's not just about food. That could even be like, say, for clothes shopping. Maybe you'll be walking around town. And this has happened to me before. Uh, like I've bought something from someone and he said, oh, hey, like normally I don't have your size, but today I just got something in and I think it's your style. You want to come in? I'll show it to you quickly. Don't worry about it. Like, just come on in. <laughs> yeah, I ended up liking it and I got that personalized recommendation for me. Or even um, there's a guy in my town that has another clothing shop. Not that I buy clothes so often. It's very uncommon that I buy clothing. But um, hats. He's got a great selection of hats that changes out depending on the time of year. And he said, hey, well, now the weather's changing. As soon as the weather gets a little colder, I'll carry some more of those flat caps that you like, and I'll let you know so you can get a look at those. And I mean, it's fantastic. It's really nice to be able to have that, that personalized experience and a friendly interaction while you're at it. But to get back to this bonus idea, maybe let's call it a full-on point. So if you are skipping around the video on YouTube and you've been checking around the chapter markers, you might want to rewind a little bit into the last point because these are going to be connected. But small town Italy, I think, is really the best choice that you can make. Okay, fine, for work, maybe it might be necessary to go to a larger city. This is the world we live in, that you have to live where you can make a living. And this is one of the reasons why I always recommend as well, that if you can make a living online and do that in your country first, and then come to Italy once you've already figured out if that is actually something that you can sustainably do, go for it, have fun. But if you can live in a smaller town, you get in contact with the people, you get to walk around and not have to deal with the hustle and bustle of some of the cities like Naples, Rome, Milan. These are places that have a lot of people rushing around and that are always going somewhere, doing something, business. Not that you won't find smaller cities that have a lot of business going on, like actually Rovigo is one of those smaller towns that actually has like an unbelievable amount of business going on here, a lot of offices and so on. But you can just take that step back and relax. And that's one of the biggest reasons why people end up being interested in Italy is slowing down, 
having the Italian pace of life. Granted, like I mentioned in the last episode, there are some downsides to the slower pace of Italian lifestyle, but you also have to look at it on the the flip side, that there are some really wonderful benefits to the slower pace of life. Another point that I want to mention, one of the reasons why I really do like where I live, and a lot of the country you can find this, not everywhere, but very specifically where I live, you can have wonderful connections around the country. Not that it's always going to be the fastest to get from one place to the other, but from where I live, I've mentioned this a number of times, for me to get from where I live to Venice, we're talking about an hour under, up to an hour and a half if you take one of the slower trains. To get to Rome, three hours. Florence, an hour and a half. Milan, five hours. Uh, Naples, five hours. To get to even probably Palermo would be maybe three hours because you have to, well, we'll call it four, four to five, depending on how you get there because you have to get the train or a car from my town to the airport and then you take the flight. But then even if you do want to get flights from where I live, you have a number of airports that are relatively easy to get to. And again, this also not just makes travel within Italy. A lot more easy, but international travel, European travel, very easy and very quick to do, along with some very cheap flights. I don't know how it is exactly now, but I know in the past, I mean, and I'm sure this exists to an extent, but I haven't looked at flights in a while, but I know that there are flights that you can find round trip 20, 30 euros or less. I mean, I, there used to even be flights to some parts of Europe from the UK for like 10 pounds round trip. That doesn't really exist anymore because of Brexit, but there are these flights that still do exist that are on the lower side. Yeah, you have to pay more for luggage and these things. And so going for it takes these lower cost airlines kind of from lower tier to mid tier. But the prices are still very attractive. If you're wanting a quick and affordable or at least somewhat affordable weekend away, you could get a flight that's super cheap going, I don't know, maybe somewhere in Ukraine a relatively cheap destination when we're talking about Europe as a whole, and then you get a cheap flight there. We're not talking about huge expenses for getting around Europe, or even if you wanted to go to Budapest, for example. These things are within the realm of possibility. Not only Italy, but the rest of Europe is practically at your front doorstep. And just before we get into this next point here, if you've been enjoying this episode so far, please be sure to give this video a like and to share it with your friends. It really does help out the project and is very greatly appreciated. But in my next point, which is very closely related, when we're talking about being in Italy, if you can position yourself in the right town, the right city, whatever it may be, you will have access to so many different little cultural things that you would think, you would think are just, oh, that's an Italian thing that those people do, but you don't really get what the essence of it is. Like uh, Parmesan cheese. You can go to the places where these things are made, or even Asiago. It's not just a type of cheese. Asiago cheese is named what it is because of a town called Asiago. Or, for example, Gorgonzola, Gorgonzola cheese. Again, another one of these places that is named after an Italian town. The name exists because of the place. Or even um, Parma ham. There's a place called Parma. You can go there. These are places that exist. It's not just some fantasy. It's not just a brand name or a factory name where these things come from. These are actual places that exist that you can have access to. But then even beyond those little things, you have the different cultural events. You, everywhere you go, you have these markets and uh, festivals that happen around the country. Okay, this past two years, things have been a little bit different, but They've been coming back even in the town where I live. The county fair happened this year. There were restrictions on that, that you did have to have the green pass. But they're, they're coming back and they're happening. And there are some other events that are happening outdoors that don't require it, at least for the time being. We'll see because there's always talks of changing rules and we never know what's going to happen. But these things do exist. And then also some of the most idyllic locations are quite easy to get to. Como, Garda, Florence, Rome, Pisa. The, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is a real place. You can go there. Again, these aren't just movie sets. 
that people think that they have seen in a movie. They are places where people live and thrive and make their lives. And all of the very different experiences touching on an earlier point that I made in this video, each part of the country that you go to has a different way of doing things. And even another example that I'm often talking about is up in Alto Adige. The Christmas markets there are completely different than what you find in the rest of the country. They're absolutely fantastic. And I love them. They are one of my favorite experiences to have. Not that you have to go and spend five days there. No, they're just a fun experience to try the different foods because it's not Italian food. It's very Germanic style food. And this is part of the greater Italy, that Italy is not just Italian. There's not just one thing that makes up what this country is. I'm not necessarily going to call those things Italian, but it's part of what is here in the country. Not everything here, or everyone for that matter, is Italian in origin. But they have all come together to make up what we know as this mishmash of Italy today. And the last point that I want to get into in this episode is about some of the modern conveniences that you find here. Because Italy is on par with many modern Western countries and the modernized world where you do have access to certain services that even some other countries that are very developed and living in the future very much so don't have the same access to. Like I've lived in countries, for example, that don't have access to Amazon. In Italy, we have Amazon Italy. We also have access to Amazon Germany, Amazon Spain, uh, Amazon Netherlands, not really even worth bothering with because it's basically the old school Amazon just with books, unless something has changed since I last looked at it, which very well could be the case. But you have access to next day deliveries. Yes, of course, I do prefer to support a local business and I prefer to buy locally. But there are times when that is a bit difficult to do, especially when the prices are so far apart. I mean, just as an example, uh, I usually use a straight edge razor on my face. And actually, <laughs> that's the reason why I've got this nick here. Happened a couple of days ago. But if I wanted to buy a package of five blades here that I would go to the supermarket. That would possibly cost, say, about five or six euros for five blades. But if I were to buy the same blades on Amazon, uh, not the same brand, but the same quality, maybe slightly better, the same stuff that actually most local barbers would even use, I would get 50 for three euros and something cents, like maybe maximum four euros. So it becomes difficult sometimes to purchase some things locally. So it is nice to have the option to even buy things that aren't available to me in my town. Like, for example, there are some times where I need specific special wires or pieces of equipment for my work that I have to have, but I can't buy them locally. These things are available and not just Amazon. There are Italian sellers from other areas in the country where you can get it within a few days or a week or so. So it's very nice to live in a country that does have that, especially having lived in other countries where these things aren't really accessible. So if you're coming from the States, this will be part of life that will be very familiar and you might not think twice about it because this is, of course, how people live nowadays. But no, it's not how everybody lives in 2021. But anyway, this is where we're going to wrap it up for this week. So a huge, huge thank you for joining me on another Friday night for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. Also, the biggest, hugest thank you to those of you who helped to support this project and helped to make these episodes possible on a monthly basis through Patreon, rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash rafaeldifuria or through the one-time donations, rafaeldifuria.com slash support or for the support through the shirts, mugs, onesies, and more posters. But that's it, I'm moving to Italy. Italy, enough said. And many more through rafaeldifuria.com slash N-Y-A-G gear. All of the links are, of course, down below. So thank you all so much for helping to make these episodes possible. Of course, as always, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there, and I'll see you all next time. Later. Mm -hmm.